Glad to see you're working there. The name's Fritz, and welcome to the Pop Goes Pizzeria, the next generation of kids' entertainment. <laughs> as you already know, you'll be guarding this place until six in the morning, and as your boss, I'm obliged to help you understand your job and the tools you'll be allowed to use during the shift. So, first things first. I've got to be honest, your current setup might not be very optimal, so to say. I didn't have time to prepare a designated room for you in the location, so you'll just have to manage with using one of the internet cafe monitors near the stage, next to the gang. Don't start complaining just yet, I set a nice spot near the window for you. Even brought a fan. Anyway, the phone you have in your hand, it's usually used by kids during the day for games and whatnot, but I've sorted out a security application that only activates during the night, which is when you're here, obviously. Everything you'll ever need for your job is ready to use. Go on, press some buttons. You can check all the rooms with set cameras that are connected online, and the ventilation system too. <sighs> Alright, I know what you're thinking. First night on the job, I'm rambling a bit, it's a lot to take in. And yes, I know there are a bunch of anthropomorphic plastic animals around you, watching you work. Trust me when I say I know how that feels. Your imagination might get a tad bit out of control. Stress does that to you. But don't worry. You're completely safe here. I've built this place from the ground up to be one of the most transparent, honest, and safest places on earth. Unlike some other businesses. If you ever stop feeling anxious, looking out the window or just, you know, taking a look outside should calm you. That tends to work for me at least. Right, back to the anthropomorphic animals. I'm sure you've already guessed by now that these are our animatronic characters. Top of the line technology. Honestly, the name animatronic doesn't do them justice. They're more like multi-purpose robots. They can be programmed to do anything I can think of. They pretty much run this place now. Of course, again, they are completely harmless. They aren't physically capable of hurting anybody. I made sure of that myself. I think I might be going on for too long. Last thing on the list. You may have noticed that this is a pre-recorded message, which means if you want to ask a question, you won't get an answer. But hey, to fix that, I've given you some options. I stayed up all night to set up a simple Q&A system to go with your app. When this call ends, you will get three topics to choose from, and when you select one of them, another audio message of mine will play to help explain whatever you want to know more about. Quite nifty, right? Obviously not quite as much freedom as a normal phone call, but it'll have to do for now. Well, that's it for your first night. Check those cameras and don't forget to take a breather once in a while, alright? Your three options should appear now. Hey, good to know you want to learn more about my crew. If you paid attention to my first message, you must have heard me say that these robots can do pretty much anything, yes? Well, I wasn't joking. This place is fully automated and run entirely by them. No human employees as of yet. Don't need them, honestly. The staff room exists purely to keep the ventilation opening out of reach of customers. Cooking, cleaning, printing, performing, taking care of kids, etc, etc. It's all down to the cartoon animals. All very efficient. Yes. Did I tell you that I built the characters too? That's what the 3D printers were originally for, before they were repurposed to do the same thing, but a lot smaller. <laughs> Didn't need anyone for that either. Designed, printed, put together, all by yours truly. Relying on other people is nonsense, I tell you. Uh, of course, don't let that discourage you from doing your job. There are always exceptions. Right, uh, I'll be in for the first night. I'll do the same thing for you tomorrow. See you, kid.
Right, here again. Second night. Hope you've gotten used to your job by now, pressing buttons on a phone. You'll have trouble finding a job that actually requires you to be on one of those. Anyway, I expect efficient use of that phone, Kip. Oh, and I'll let you know now. Don't start slacking off. I'm paying attention. After your first week is done, I'll be doing a review of your progress to see if you are fit to continue or not. If you do your job especially... ...much to work with just yet. This is just the test run. But there is something for you to do in case you get bored, I suppose. Since, well, I'm not going to treat you like those robots behind you. So we're entering the winter time. I imagine you'll be working just next week, so it's going to get pretty darn cold for you. But, and I'm sure you've already noticed this from yesterday. I don't know. I have given you access to the ventilation system, which means you should be able to turn on the heating grid once in a while to warm up the place. They'll stay on for about a minute, probably, but that's long enough, right? Bear in mind the vents go around the perimeter of the building, so well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Well, that should keep you entertained. God, I hope you're as easily pleased as I am. That's all for tonight. Oh, wait, now it's your time to talk. Here you go. Ah, yes, as I said, you're only allowed to have them run in one-minute bursts. It's not that I don't trust you, it's... Well, everybody can make mistakes, right? These things overheat if they're left on for long periods of time, and I can't risk that. We all know what happened to that attraction last year. I... I remember I worked with a similar problem. You know, being under constraints like that, but... I don't know. He was fine. I was fine. I'm sure you will be too. Nothing dangerous about vents. <laughs> oh, what am I saying? Just check on the heat sometimes, and yes, you'll have limited use over it, and I'm sorry about that. Right. See you tomorrow.
I should start off this call by pointing out that I actually made a mistake in my previous message, which was yesterday's main recording for you. I said that the heaters in the vents stayed on for a minute when you turned them on. In reality, I've made it closer to like nine seconds or something, so uh, sorry about that. Not a huge mistake, but I should own up to it anyway. It's one of the only things I haven't got written down. I should actually make a note of it now, I suppose. I'm kind of tired right now. I've been doing all these calls in one take, so I've just noticed it. Such a huge difference, too. One minute should be ten seconds. Jeez, I'm an idiot sometimes. <laughs> hey, now that you've been here for two nights, correct? Beginning your third one now, yes? Tell me, what do you think about the place? The pizzeria, I mean. It's real special. Let me tell you, during the day, you can really feel fantasy, the fun, and the safety, you know? Kids can run down the halls and be greeted by the characters. They gather around and sing with them on the stage. They build and print out these figurines like posable toys. And of course they get to paint them, coat them in a binding agent, etc. It makes them feel grown up. It makes them feel special, you know? <laughs> I remember this kid one day. Totally heartwarming. There was this kid running around and somehow managed to open one of the locked rooms. The server room, I think it was. And he started messing around in there. Well, I was in my office, like always, and I see this kid on the camera. I start to get a little worried. Now, here we go again, I'm saying to myself. And I was about to go get him sorted out myself, but right then, as I'm taking my jacket off, Blake, that badger character to your left, gets in the room with the kid and starts to play a little game using the server room's monitor. Have you... You know the game Simon Says? Well, it was like that. He just turned it. Uh, oh, hold on now. I'll sort the rest out later. I'll leave this message here. The option should be up for you now. Sorry about this. Oh, you don't know what a game is. <laughs> That's all right, no matter. For a quick explanation, it's a game where someone shows you a color, like, you know, green, yellow, red, and you have to repeat the same color back to them. Sometimes there are multiple colours which you need to repeat in the same order back. But in the case of Blake and the boy, who was quite young, it was only one. Sorry if that wasn't that good of an explanation, but it's just a kid's game, nothing more. During the day you can play it on one of the monitors here with that panel in front of you. A bit more complicated than just a colour appearing on a screen, but, you know, same concept. They use the phone for that too. That's children's stuff though. Don't let me down with you playing games during your shift. Speaking of work, you should get back to it. See you tomorrow.
decided to take some breaks between recording these calls. Not many are left, but still, I didn't think it would be this stressful. I've just got some notes, not a script or anything. I feel like I might be talking too much about things that are obvious for you, so I'm just going to wing this one. I think at this point you must be pretty confident with your job now, if you can even call it that. I think now might be a good time for you to know a little more about me. I have a feeling that you might be curious. Am I wrong? Right then. I was born in November 1968 in Texas, lived a fine life up until my teens, had no real problems with my family, but we weren't exactly rich. My father was an architect at the time, and my mother stayed home with my brother and I. Until the 80s, we lived in a flat, or I suppose it would have been called an apartment over there. It was pretty decent, I think, but honestly, I can't remember much. I had an accident in my teens, stuff I really don't want to talk about. Please don't ask. Might explain in a later call or something if there is a t uh, time. Anyway, fortunately, I survived the injury, believe it or not. It was all down to a very generous donor, your blood. The whole thing was pretty strange and vague for us, and all I know was a small team of people, or maybe it was one person, was willing to give tons of blood to the hospital, and after an entire encyclopedia of signed papers, the transfusion was allowed on behalf of the procedure being an experiment. I was close to death, bear in mind. I lost most of my memory from before the incident, and the whole event caused a huge stir in the media. I was 18, and with the state I was in, paparazzi wasn't the best treatment. You know? So I sorted out something with my parents, and we moved here to England. So, uh, hopefully on top of being a security guard, you can be a friend too. I wanted to get some of these stories off my chest for a while. It's, uh, I don't have many people to share them with. And my daughter's kind of busy most of the time. Just someone for me to talk to. And of course, listen to, so go ahead. What do you want to talk about? Ah, oh, yeah. So this place looks significantly expensive to run, I'm sure. Especially for one person, right? Well, it is. Thousands of pounds put in and out of this place every day. It's still a little independent cafe kind of thing, but the technology does make it seem professional, I suppose. Money isn't really an issue for me anymore. I've sold stuff before the pizzeria was open, mainly based around robotics, machinery, whatnot. And of course, the pizzeria itself brings in a significant amount of cash to put back into ingredients, electricity, materials for the printers, etc. As I mentioned earlier, Popgoes does most of the work, so I don't need to hire a cleaner or a chef. I also got a decent amount of money from the injury I mentioned. I can't remember how that worked, but I'd rather avoid mentioning it in case it was a mistake and they want it back. <laughs> anyway, I hope that cleared it up. Good question. See you tomorrow.
Nice work, kid. Only a few days left of your shift. Maybe if you're super good, I'll let you mess around in my office, try out some of Weaselworth's features. Though it's not that exciting, you might be able to control the gang, see what they can do. I don't know, maybe not. We'll see. I'm wondering, since I can't remember how much I've taught you up to this point, do you know about Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? I think these calls might be getting to my head, but I don't know. I've been thinking of that place a lot more than usual for the past hour or so. Not in a disturbing or scary sense, just... I'm not sure, it's like some pieces are being put together. Freddy Fazbear. <laughs> you know they used to say those characters were haunted. There were some murders related to the location back in the 80s. People found some corpses buried in the animatronic suits. Really sad. I was a fan of that franchise, named my kid after one of the characters there. Not because I was a fan, really, but because... Well, because I wanted to love that name again. After, you know... It doesn't matter. I was a fan of the restaurant, and it hurt to see it fall so morbidly, that's all. I wonder sometimes if there was some kind of moral reasoning behind whoever killed those kids. I have my own suspicions as to hundreds of other people, you know. You should see what these people put online. There's a popular theory going around that the guy who did it had purple skin. Totally purple skin and purple clothes. Sounds like a demon or something, right? Something paranormal. I don't know. But around that time was when I got help from someone in the hospital. We, uh, don't know where the blood came from. It's all... What if he... What if it was him? Oh, God, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry. It... It's times like these when the nightmares sometimes visit me during the day. Ask me a question, then. It might calm me down. People online, well, the whole series of events has become a big topic of discussion for people interested in that kind of thing. Real-life mysteries and stuff. The murders of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was such a diverse and confusing situation at the time that people are still finding clues and making stories about it to this day. Hell, even an amusement park attraction was centered around it. The main theory surrounding this guy was that he was a mental patient on the loose, stuck kids with a cake knife or something. It technically can make sense, but it's pretty boring. I love a good horror story, and that's not how you tell one, you know what I mean? They found something like 20 kids stuffed into suits over the span of the company's run, which is crazy. One is crazy, I know, but 20 is just... Why? There has to be a reason for that, more than he was a mental patient. Also, yeah, they thought he was purple. Someone found a drawing that a child had done while at one of the pizzerias, which showed a purple figure in the background. I'm pretty sure that was the only evidence for that, but it's enough for me. And, uh, you know, the rest of the theorists. I really don't delve too deep into this kind of thing. Okay, well, that's it for today. See you again tomorrow.
thinking about some things. This is my last message. I feel like I haven't been honest enough with you. I've been trying, please know that. But some things I just... I have a question for you. A serious, personal question. I'll try to set an example. There's this uh, person that's really close to you. He's recently been acting strange, maybe a bit scary. People say he's done horrible things. But you've trusted him for all your life. He's been listening to your problems and you really look up to him. Even if this person has made big mistakes in his life, if he does regret it in the end, would you be willing to forgive them if you know who he is? Would you look past his errors and try to bring him back into your life? Do you think you can trust him? I, 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 no, this will do. Thank you for working with me so much. This is the end of your shift at the Pop Goes Pizzeria. Let me know your answer.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 